Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Content Thief Lace and today we are going to be talking about unique equipment. Yeah, it is a little bit premature, but as you can see, we are only like three, possibly four months out. And the reason that we start talking about this four months out is because we got to do a little bit of pre-farming, you know what I mean? There's honestly not overly too much that we can pre-farm to be able to unlock the unique equipment itself. However, the pre-farming is more for the characters themselves. So for example, like Ray is not really used. However, she's going to be a powerhouse in CB later on. And so therefore when Rey actually comes into relevance with her UE we want to make sure she's at five stars so that she can perform at optimal level and so with that being said what I'm going to be doing in this video is kind of like going through like the mechanics of unique equipment as well as talking about batch one what I mean by batch one is that each of the characters get unique equipments in like batches so as you can see over here and so you can see that the UEs for these characters are being released first and then we move on to batch two over here and the time interval between each release is approximately 30 days it's about monthly the amount of characters also varies it varies from like about like five to nine sometimes it goes a bit lower sometimes a bit higher but yeah that's kind of the time frame we're expecting anyway let me digress and like let's follow this format okay let's follow the structure all right so without further ado let me introduce you to ue itself and so i've got some footage i recorded a few months ago and so this is the footage here it's on the jp server and as you can see i am about to juice up my mwimi the first thing you'll notice is that we're actually going to have an extra tab over here and it's probably going to be called ue if they call it something else it's going to be really freaking weird but like essentially yeah look at me just like pointing it out and so here what we have is like Muimi's UE itself so as you can see here the UE itself actually gives a whole bunch of stats as well as a skill down here rather it's not giving you a new skill but it's upgrading your skill one and this is consistent with all UE so just to summarize with all UEs you get a bunch of stats and an upgrade to your skill one for Muimi herself she is going to be getting additional physical attack more physical crit rate and some TP boost all in all really nice stats especially for like a physical attacker it's not always like this though and this kind of changes is like your upgrade priority for example ray is going to get like attack and hp and like you don't really care about hp on ray and so it's for these kinds of reasons and with that logic that you don't actually like upgrade it well with a high priority anyway ray still gives attack and it's still relevant but it's like obviously lower priority than like something like this right all right so with that being said let's have a look at what actually happens so the mechanics behind the ue itself so how exactly do we equip it and so as you can see you create the ue using 50 of the character shards and three of these heart orb things these three heart orb things are actually farmed in like a new dungeon looking thing. Actually, it's more akin to Grotto. So like you guys already probably skip ticket Grotto like crazy now. This one is essentially just going to be another thing to skip ticket. So the new dungeon Grotto heart thing is actually called Sanctum Survey. And when you clear it, you have a chance of getting shards. So you need 10 shards to actually create one of these heart orbs. So as you can imagine, you need 30 shards to actually get this one here. On top of these two materials, you also need one mil mana, but hopefully at that point you'll be swimming in it. We're still four months away. Like after four months of progression, you got like the two times dungeon mana and the grottos and all of that you guys should be swimming all right and so we are going to build the ue and as you can see we've got the fragments over here and after that we are going to go slam it so we're going to go back and then as you can see this is the menu i'm going to slap okay but before that i want to show off this symbol over here that essentially just means that the character is equipped with the ue and where this is probably most important is in arena because it will actually help you discern between characters that actually do have their ues and don't so don't get baited by like the kurumi that doesn't actually have the ue but is five stars and in arena she's still good but she's just not like as good all right, so let's slap that bad boy on. And I just wanted to show you guys a little bit more, which is the upgrading of it. And so as you can see to upgrade it, we are just using like refines. However, these refines don't expire at any point. Every single point of EXP that we sink in carries over even when we actually have to unlock the levels. So upon locking the UE itself, the maximum level of it is level 30. However, you can expend like those character shards as well as those heart shards to boost the maximum level. And I don't think I actually have footage of that over here. And so that's a little bit sad, but you guys can probably already imagine it. It's just going to be like this guy is going to be like 50 or 70 or 130 stuff like that all right so let's jump out of this video and into my stolen content before we get into the stolen content i want to show you guys that we are getting lunar tower like 60 days so that's about two months before we get the sanctum survey and the unique equipment and from the lunar tower we actually do get some heart orbs as rewards so we can technically kind of pre-farm a little bit for the ue because you guys already saw the materials right it's the character shards it's those heart orbs and it's mana the only thing that we can't farm right now and we will be limited by is those heart orbs so yeah lunar tower i think it's going to be pretty 
good, especially because it's also going to add 1.5k gems to our like monthly income. Okay, for real, let's get into the stolen content. And as you guys can see, this is uh, Miss Nyara's guide. I want to go through this one because Nyara's guides are always like really freaking good. They're really well put together. They're really well formatted. Sometimes it is missing a little bit of detail. And like, that's why I have all of these tabs open. But for the most part, these are like so incredibly solid. However, sometimes I do have a little bit of differing opinions. And so that's why I'm here because I'm not a complete content thief. I actually have some opinion to add and like some logic to impart. All right, so let's have a look at the front page in which I think she is just like reiterating pretty much everything I said before. So reading through all of this, I don't think there's anything like I particularly missed. I think the only thing would be something like this maybe. The drop rates for the hearts for level one and level two. And so you can actually do both of these levels five times a day. And so what that technically means is that you have 10 attempts a day, although five are at 35% drop rate and at 50% drop rate for the other five. All right, so with that being said, let's just jump into the characters. So we got Bash one over here. There's actually quite a lot to talk about. And there are some things that I don't think I knew. For example, this one over here, you can cheese EX Dungeon 1 alone with Pekarin. Now that she calls it out, it's actually like a lot more obvious, but like, holy crap, that's actually really good. But hopefully by four months down the line, we'll be able to smash EX Dungeon 1 anyway. The thing I do need to call out about this guide is that it is assuming a skill level of 99. And so what that means is that you see all of these numbers in here, like in UE 100, uh, UE 19%. Over here, we've got debuffs, it's PDEF by 60. So what's important to note is that we will be way over like level 100. And so these values scale with your skill level, which scales with your character level, which scales with your account level. And so all of them should technically be slightly stronger than these, but these are like great baselines to compare with. So for Pekarin, her skill one gets an M defense upgrade. So it's going from 80 to 100, assuming again, a skill level of 99. On top of that, her healing goes from 11% to 19%, which is really freaking massive. But the really good thing about Pekarin is that she actually gets an absorption barrier on her UE. And for you guys who are not familiar with the absorb barrier, it's essentially like a barrier which absorbs damage, but also heals you at the same time. Some characters that have this is like Jun on her UB. So you can see over here, barrier on herself that absorbs. And so if you guys do have Jun, like she absorbs the damage and she also heals herself. Another example would actually be Kuka. So let me just bring her up right now. And so as you can see, her UB is a magic absorb barrier. So essentially when she gets hit by magic damage, she will actually recover her HP. And so you can already imagine like how freaking good this is on Pekarin, right? If she is getting an absorb barrier that is for physical and magical defense, it not only like boosts her survivability, but also her sustain. The great thing about these absorption barriers is that it's not like an immediate heal. It's mitigating and it's also healing afterwards. All in all, her unique equipment effect is like freaking massive. And the stats of her UE are giving her P defense, M defense, and HP recovery boost. This is so freaking awesome because Pekarin, you guys already know, she is a tank. And so this is just giving her more bulk. However, what's really interesting about Pekarin is that she actually has some synergy where she gets HP recovery boost. And this HP recovery boost is also going to boost her healing as well. So all in all, you can already tell why she is a high priority for unlock and high priority for leveling. In particular leveling, because the logic for leveling is that she is going to be getting like so many useful stats from it. And so my thoughts behind this, especially for the PVP or PVE, is that I admittedly did not know about the cheesing for EX1 dungeon, but I knew that she was going to be a massive figure, especially in store comps. Not only just that, but she is just going to be like a wall that you can't break down. Although to be honest, like right now with five star Pekrin, she is already a wall. This just really makes her like a wall, like a like a great wall, right? The great wall of Pekrin. All right, next we've got Ray, and Ray is a really interesting one. Going through her skill, what we've got is a debuff, a P defense debuff by 60. And like I said before, guys, this keeps scaling, and so it's really important to keep her up to date in terms of levels. And so physical defense down, you guys already know it. It is like the most important thing in CB. And so therefore, a very high unlock priority. You get that bad boy straight away after you unlock it. And so again, looking at the stats, attack plus 233, and then you got HP plus 270. In my opinion, especially for CB, the HP is obviously quite meh. If she was getting like some level of crit rate, like look at Kiaru, she's getting 75 crit rate at max. I'm looking at that and I'm like, oh baby. But yeah, that is why I would agree that the leveling of this UE is a medium priority. Honestly, I could even say low, but that's just like me. All right, and as for her utility, you guys already know she is mainly going to be used for CB. In general, decent bulky single target attacker if you need that. Yeah, yeah, nah. Like yeah, but like nah, but like yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, fine, fair enough. I'm not sure I'll ever use Ray in arena until like her six star. All right, next we've got Kurumi and Kurumi is probably one of the most important ones here. And the reason she is so important is because she becomes like an insane staller. I completely agree with that. And the reason this is possible is because like her allies defense or defense buff, the buff itself actually freaking doubles. So if I come over here, Kurumi, and then let's look at her, this one, you can see when I switch between the tabs, it's going from 0.375 up to 0.75. 0.375 is kind of okay, but like 0.75 kind of gets a little bit nutty. So if you can imagine at level 100, you're getting about like 75 magic defense and physical defense to everybody. But not only that, she actually gives TP to everybody as
as well. And that's like the only one that gives this right now is like Maho and her UB. So yeah, this is like really freaking crazy. As for her stats, her stats are so stellar as well. So she gets HP, she gets all defenses and she gets HP regen. Like there is literally nothing to not like about this. Like everything is just so good. For me personally, I think her unlock priority is actually like very high, but that is only because I am quite balanced in both PVP and clan battle. If you are like a pure clan battle player, like then Kurumi, you can kind of ignore. All right, moving on, we've got our cat. She's not so wet over here, but she's still looking pretty good. We've got an unlock priority of medium, which I, mm, I don't know about that one. And then a leveling of medium and a high priority if short of mages. Okay, I guess so. But for me personally, Kiaru, she's just unfortunately not that strong. And her UE doesn't really help that, right? Because all she's doing is a little bit of a splash damage on like the frontal units. And the splash isn't even all that great, right? It's only of a 200 range. On top of that, it's also centered around like the first enemy. And so like, it's really easy to freaking counter. The silver lining to this, and it's not really a silver lining because it's like not that much, is that she does give a magic defense down of 15, which is honestly really pitiful. I said silver lining, but like, I didn't really mean it. And so as you can see, the scaling on this is like actually horrible. It's freaking 0.1425. All in all, especially if you have like a whole bunch of the other mages, I'm not really sure about like Kiaru. I would say this is kind of like borderline inconsequential, but but she definitely is higher than Saren and Yui. On the other hand, on the stats of her UE, she is getting attack and crit. And so if you are looking to level it up, it is a great deal. But yeah, Kiaru, unfortunately, it's like really lackluster compared to the rest of them, except for these two. It's like really lackluster down here. All right, next we've got Hiyori and we've got the 85% AOE damage. It's nice. It's an extra bit of damage, but it's not like really nice, like raise P defense down. However, the range on this is double Kiaru's. And so as you can imagine, it is like a little bit better. And so Niara does talk about this because it is decent at punishing Vanguard heavy teams. I think it might be overstating it a little bit because like the Vanguard heavy teams typically are going to be full of tanks. And I think tanks are just going to be able to soak that up really, really easily. If it was a Vanguard heavy team in terms of like Makoto and Kaori and another Hiyori, then sure, that makes a lot of sense. But otherwise, again, like tanks, typically Vanguards, it's not going to do overly much. As for CB, good flex attacker. Yeah, I agree. She has always been really, really solid. And with the logic that you all hopefully have now ingrained into your brain, we are going to go level up if you are going to use her because attack and crit, that's freaking dank. All right, next we have Kokoro. And Kokoro is, is quite interesting because what it does is that it's giving her extra attack as well as TP boost. This is nice because Kokoro is like such a good staple, but like she also actually does damage. A lot of people underestimate the damage she does because they view her as just a support, but that is honestly like a hefty amount and it's going to make a difference in the long run. The TP boost is even more interesting because it definitely does boost her survivability and having TP boost means that you can be a little bit more aggressive in your timelinings. It either means that you get a little bit more of a buffer so it's not as stressful or it could actually change timelines like generally. What I mean by that is like, for example, if Kokoro got her UB a little bit too late before, but like after Makoto's UB, with this TP boost, she might be able to like do her UB and then Makoto can get her UB for a little bit more damage. On the other hand, looking at the stats, it's attack or defense and HP boost. The thing about this HP recovery boost is that she is only healing herself and she already like heals so freaking much. So it's not like it's the greatest thing in the world. The only thing that's really worth talking about is that she is gaining some attack, but that's just like really not worth it. Like compare that attack to Hyori's or Kiaru's and you'll realize it's freaking half of it. So yeah, I would completely agree with this assessment where it's like kind of a medium priority. So yes, I agree with Nyara's assessment of the unlock priority of medium and like a level priority of low. And this one is kind of okay. All right, next we've got Nozomi. And Nozomi is pretty interesting because she actually has an extra duration on her stun. And that is really interesting because that extra little bit of stun is pretty nice. So essentially her UE lets her AOE damage go from 40% up to 90%. In my opinion, that's kind of like merp because like she doesn't do all that much damage anyway. But then her stun duration goes from 1.5 to 2 seconds, which is super lit. But on top of that, she has a physical attack debuff. Physical attack debuff, you can look at this in two ways. It's kind of like a similar scenario to the Hyori's. There are like two scenarios for Vanguard heavy teams. Your Nozomi is typically going to be attacking the tanks. If it's attacking the tanks, then like this is completely inconsequential. Those tanks are barely going to be doing any damage to you anyway. However, if you are catching like a Kaori, a Tamaki, a Makoto, then this is so worth. It just really boosts the survivability of the rest of your team. And so whilst it is like mildly situational, like we definitely take that. Okay, well, that being said, let's move down to her stats of her UE. And that is so, so nice. She's gaining HP, she's gaining all defenses, and she's gaining dodge. Honestly, if you do end up unlocking Nozomi's and you are like a PvP lover, I would say that this is actually high. I don't know about you guys, but Nozomi has been like super, super solid. And with her UE, she's just going to get a little bit more solid. All right, moving on, we have the lows down here. And for the most part, I actually completely agree. I actually don't know how many times I've trash talked Saren's UE in like the last few videos, but my point stands and I guess now is the opportunity to like explain why. Her skill one is a 
already crap, right? So let me go over to it. It inflicts physical damage to all enemies in the front line. Like it's okay. It's not like the coolest thing in the world, but it's okay. When she gets her UE, this damage is based on Saren's current HP. Enmity, enmity, enmity. For the most part, you're playing with fire here, right? <laughs> Get it? But essentially you want her to be lower to do more damage. But really you don't want to risk that because her true utility is actually in her skill too. Everyone already knows about this like TP booster. If you guys use Saren, which like all of you are going to, you guys already know about this TP boosting skill. This is what we really take Saren in for, not this guy over here. And if the only way to take advantage of this is to risk her dying, then like I would rather not take it. However, it is technically free damage. So like you should take it. On that note, I think you should take all UEs and I don't think there is actually a UE that makes your character go worse. But yeah, you can see like why I'm not exactly a massive fan of her UE. As for the upgrade, she is getting a little bit of HP, but oh, what, 187 HP? Honestly, that's not really even worth talking about. Although the attack stat is like quite high. I'm pretty sure that's actually the highest attack in like this bunch. Yeah, it is, but that's still not gonna convince me to invest into her. Because like I'm saying again, you don't bring Saren for the damage, you are bringing her for the TP boost. And so lastly, let's talk about Yui and whoa, wow, we've got a no. That's really interesting because I see this guy over here, which is attack by 343, and then you got the HP recovery boost by 38. Although I do get her rationale, like the minor upgrade that is not really needed to do her job. I guess when I read that, I do kind of agree. At that point, you would hope that Yui is healing enough of your team for them to survive and the rest of your team is juiced up enough to also survive. As for the skill, this is on a skill one. So it's that like single target bolt. And so this bolt is debuffing the target's P attack by 750. Hmm. Okay, I guess so. By I guess so, I mean it kind of sucks. That's kind of the conclusion. Like, what exactly does this do for you? It boosts the survivability of your team. But like I said, if you're like juiced enough, then you should be able to survive without any of this. And so with that in mind, I agree with this entire assessment. And with that in mind, I agree with essentially like this whole thing. There was one or two priorities that I was like, mm, I'd probably prioritize it a little bit higher. So I was thinking more Nozomi because that stun is like so freaking annoying. As well as Kurumi, who you're probably going to see everywhere like the day it launches. I think that this is so massive and like so many people are itching to use store comps again. That's not to say that store comps don't exist right now, but like uh, she just makes it really work. So yeah, for me personally, I would say that Kurumi is high and Nozomi is probably a little bit less than that. I think if I could rearrange Kiaru to be like kind of just above Siren, that would work as well. But yeah, for the most part, this is a really, really solid guide as they all are from Miss Niara. And so with that being said, hopefully with this video, I've actually imparted like the logic that you would use to assess each of these characters. A lot of this was as usual, like less about what you should do well it kind of was what you should do but hopefully more about well if a new character comes out and it's going to have this ue and these stats and this effect well then should you prioritize it or should you not and so hopefully running through each of these like kind of gives you like a good idea as to well yeah it's a high priority or no it's not really but yeah otherwise i think that's actually it for this video so again another massive shout out to miss niara for putting this together because honestly this is a really really good summary of all of this as for the next batches i'll probably do them as we get closer so maybe this one i'll do next month but hopefully with like all of this logic you won't even have to watch me anymore and you can just unsubscribe i'm just kidding guys please stay around for me and so with that being said let's wrap up this video so i've got a secret message for you guys and that is hearts hearts because hearts that, 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 yeah that's it hearts and so if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below i would really appreciate it it lets me know that you've actually watched all the way up until here which is the end and so i really appreciate that and thank you so much otherwise if you guys have found this video kind of helpful or like mildly entertaining then please consider a like a sub a comment a follow and share it with your friends otherwise drop by the discord if you are feeling a bit lonely or like want to talk about something if you do want to support the channel we do have like some affiliate links down in the comments below as well as like a membership thing the membership thing gets you like a cool badge as well as some cool emotes. But otherwise, as my manager once said to me, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.